Hey everyone, me again. So something a little different than usual because we're not dealing with a milserp. I guess you could say it's milserp adjacent. This, of course, as you likely gathered from the title, is a Pioneer Arms AK and 556 from their Forged Trunnion series. Of course, to get the elephant in the room out of the way uh, at the very beginning, I am well aware that uh, Pioneer Arms does not enjoy the most positive reputation amongst AK enthusiasts. To be fair, a lot of that is actually attributed to their historic use of cast trunnions. So allegedly with this new generation that relies on forged trunnions, a lot of these issues would have been addressed. Whether or not that's actually true is what I intend to find out. Because if it is, uh, this would represent a pretty excellent value, at least by today's standards, for 5.56 AKs. I purchased this new from Atlantic Firearms for $716, yes, with my own money. In case anybody needs to be told, a channel with some 500 subscribers is not getting rifles for free from anybody. But uh, in any case, probably the next most affordable option for a 5.56 AK today probably would be the Palmetto State offering, and those are right around $1,000. And keep in mind, Palmetto AKs actually have a pretty uh, spotty reputation for quality. As far as uh, the next most affordable option where you can have a high expectation of reasonable quality would probably be the Zostava M90, which brand new goes for more like eleven dollars to $1,200. So we're talking about a several hundred dollar difference. So you see what I'm getting at in terms of value. Of course, if this is a piece of junk, then it could be a ripoff at any price. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the resources to blow through 5,000 rounds of ammo through the course of one weekend. I wish I did. So this is probably going to end up being kind of a, a series with a couple of periodic installments and updates. In this first one, we'll be looking at initial quality straight out of the box, and there will be some test firing as well, just to see that it's not dead on arrival, because I have had that happen with other manufacturers. Uh, that said, I guess let's get started. So the rifle ships in a fairly standard cardboard box like so, uh, with one rather comical exception. As you're likely aware, many AK manufacturers will ship their AKs with a rubber or plastic cap on the charging handle to keep it from puncturing the box that it comes in. These guys took a somewhat different approach in that they uh, took a piece of cardboard scrap and, and taped it to the spot where it was likely to puncture. Hopefully not a sign of how they do things in general as far as the guns themselves. I thought it was kind of funny, but so I'd, I'd point it out. Other than that, nothing too exciting. It comes with a chamber flag uh, with a sticker in case you're not too ashamed to advertise that you own a Pioneer AK. Uh, it does come with a polymer magazine and also an instruction manual. It's basically a pamphlet in black and white. There's some background information in there that uh, attempts to tie Pioneer to the historic uh, Polish Factory 11 how true any of that stuff is, as opposed to marketing hype, I'm not quite sure. Other than that, all that's in there is some field strip instructions and some instructions on how to adjust the sight. Things that you should probably already know, but I guess if uh, you don't, uh, it's in there. Okay, on to the gun itself. So considering the price, again, this is something priced basically like the Mitsubishi Mirage of the AK world, the quality actually doesn't seem terrible. For instance, the rivets are fine. I can't get my nail under any of them for one example. The furniture doesn't wobble, at least not yet. The front sight is not visibly canted. Uh, the mechanical parts all seem to fit together and function reasonably well. I have check headspace. It is safe, at least for the time being. Not absolutely terrible. One thing I, I do want to point out is it does have the hallmarks of a cheap AK. For instance, uh, one spot I kind of like to notice, which is maybe seems a little odd, but this little corner of the dust cover here actually sticks out. I don't know how that shows up on camera, but it's actually quite sharp. Like you could very easily cut yourself on that. On nicer AKs, for instance, on this Zostava M90, they bother to round that over. Or, you know, same thing on, say, this Arsenal SGL. Uh, things of that nature. Another thing to point out, of course, is this safety for, the, for this little enhanced safety. They just have a thin bent piece of sheet metal that they spot welded on. To me, it looks rather crude and chintzy. Uh, I may end up replacing that with something a little better just for aesthetic reasons. You have this plastic pistol grip in this red-orange color. It's obviously meant to approximate the Bakelite light that you often see on uh, firearms from the former Eastern Bloc, but it, it doesn't look very convincing. It looks rather cheap in my opinion. The other thing that's rather egregious, of course, is this stock to receiver fit. Um, as you can see, it's quite sloppy. Now it's solid, it doesn't wobble, but it's quite unsightly. This isn't terribly uncommon for AKs, especially budget AKs. I usually don't see it be quite that bad. But again, considering the price overall, the build quality isn't absolutely terrible as far as I could tell. 
Um, time will tell how well it holds up, of course, but uh, not too bad in this regard. Now, one serious area of concern I do want to bring up, I think it would be a colossal fail to not mention, and this is unfortunately somewhat inherent to all 5.56 AKs, and that's magazine compatibility. Uh, magazine fit is just not quite as standardized for 5.56 AKs compared to, say, 7.62x39 or 5.45. So the, the rifle actually ships with one of these Pioneer branded mags. Uh, these seem to fit and function reasonably well. Uh, it doesn't wobble whatsoever in either direction, not front to back, not side to side. Atlantic does sell more of these if that's what you're after. Um, how well they hold up, how durable they actually are, I don't know. The marketing materials sure talk them up, but, uh, you know... How much stock can you put in any of that? Some of the other mags, however, I've had some difficulty with. For example, this is a Pro Mag with the steel lining. I know Pro Mag is not a great brand, but they're generally okay for range use. And this one is far too wide to fit in the mag well without uh, without modification, whether it probably needs some uh, milling out of the mag well on either side or something like that. It's just too wide. Uh, will not work. The uh, Waffle Mag from Pro Mag seems to fit and function reasonably well without issue. Steel Zostava, far, far too wide. It won't come close to even like fitting in the mag well. Uh, same is true for the Zostava Polymer offering. And of course, the Galil Mags, like the, both the Polymer and the um, Surplus Steel, also both don't work. So, um, by the way, except for the Galil ones, all these others do work in my M90. So I do think it's this gun. I don't know if it's just this specific one example or for Pioneer in general that the magwells are that tight, but uh, potentially you could be looking at some needing to do some modification to get some of these other mags to work. There are, uh, if I, don't know if I, I don't know if I've mentioned it, uh, several other manufacturers that do make AK-556 mags, and I don't know how well those work. I haven't tried them all, uh, but that is a potential concern. So that said, I think we can uh, now roll in some uh, test footage from the range and draw some conclusions. Okay, so I tried a variety of ammunition. I fired a total of 200 rounds. I know I didn't portray all of it. I don't know how exciting it would be to watch if I did. Uh, so this included 62 grain in 5.56, a couple of options for the 55 grain, and of course some 223 as well. This is just some Bosnian made brass case stuff. Uh, I used uh, some mags, uh, these Pioneer mags as well, and then one of the uh, the Waffle mags from Pro Mag as well. I didn't suffer any reliability problems whatsoever. Everything ran fine. It ejected very positively. The primer strikes looked perfect. I didn't get a good sense for accuracy because I only had access to a 50-yard range, so I couldn't really quite get the... The, the best opportunity to test that. Plus I do want to switch out the muzzle device. And so uh, when, when I do that, that's when I really want to get it dialed in. By the way, uh, no bayonet lug, um, unfortunately for these, uh, just an aside. So yes, um, 200 rounds without really any problems whatsoever. Uh, more details on, on the accuracy aspect coming, of course, uh, in the next installment, but so far so good. Now, obviously I can't say these are awesome, go out and buy one. I highly recommend it because this is kind of like buying a car and it survives that first weekend road trip to the beach and back and doesn't give you any problems, doesn't mean it won't crap out after 10,000 miles and the car could still be a piece of junk. And so this rifle is not really out of the woods yet. Um, it's just that it's not dead on arrival. So, so far so good. Um, of course, uh, stay tuned for the next installment. I, I, and of course, also thank you again for watching as always.